Good evening. Hello. Well, you're going to see the title of this video. Um, and I got to say straight out the gate that this video is primarily intended for those of my nation, America. But those of you of the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters outside my nation, um, this may benefit you as well, um, being aware of how much, especially right now, you put any stock in your government, okay? But this uh, video is primarily for my American countrymen. Okay, and it's what's interesting is when I have a lot of correspondence with those of other nations. Praise the Lord for that. And every single one um, recognizes and realizes what most of my countrymen don't. America is going down, and America is going down very quickly. I personally believe, I'm going to just give you my opinion here uh, before we get into the scriptures. I personally believe that the Jesuits are going to select Joe Biden and put him as the president. Uh, I could be wrong, of course, because whoever is going to be worse for our nation here in America is ultimately who is going to be selected as the president. And for those of you, my American countrymen, uh, wake up. Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks. We do not have elections. It is a selection. Okay? It said, uh, an axiom here in my nation is, well, if you don't vote, you don't have any right to complain. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I agree with what that wicked man, George Carlin, who is burning in hell right now, if you know who he is, I'm sorry, but he made the statement which I totally agree with. If I do not vote, I have every right to complain about the politician that you put into office that I had nothing to do with. And besides, when you get right down to it, Donald Trump is Jesuit trained. Okay? That's a fact. That's a fact. Fordham University. Okay? He has also gone on record as saying that he wishes to end anti-Catholic bias. Biden is also a Catholic. But see, here's the thing about Biden. He has a black woman as his vice president. And with here in America with the Black Lives Matter movement running rampant, and also with Antifa, funded by George Soros, who has ties onto the Masons, the Masons which are infiltrated and totally overrun with the Jesuits, okay? I personally believe that the Jesuits are going to select Joe Biden. And Joe Biden is just, woo -hoo -hoo, he is crazy. Okay, and there are um, concerns about his mental health. <laughs> what I believe is going to happen is that they are going to elect Biden. And then something is going to happen where he is going to be removed as being president. And America will have its very first woman president who just happens to be black.
And that's going to tie in, this is my own personal opinion, that is going to tie in with all the Black Lives Matter matter thing going on. Okay? A woman president who happens to be black, who's going to touch on the sensibilities of the Black Lives Matter movement, and America is going to go down, 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 down. That is my personal opinion. That is my personal opinion. After the selections, if uh, Trump is still selected as the president, like Brother Brian said, <clears throat> that is just going to ignite the right to rise up. Either way, it's a no-win situation for us here in America. It's a no-win situation for us. And then you have these imbeciles like Phil Robertson, you know, the duck commander guy, who has said that the Democrats never mention God, but yet Trump and all them are on God's side. That guy, I, I've actually unfortunately have watched a few of his videos lately. That guy is a complete and total, utter imbecile. He is a vile, disgusting, wretched, wicked heretic. Phil Robinson, the Duck Commander. Tell him I said so. Okay? He's scum. He's scum. But see... A lot of people who like to think that America is this great godly nation, they will go to the scriptures, or excuse me, they will go to their Bible. This is the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, okay? They will go to their Bibles, and they will try to find verses to show that the Bible is talking about America. <laughs> and when you uh, look into the scriptures, there is not a great Western power mentioned, especially within the book of Revelation. No, not at all. Not at all. Why is that? Because America is going down. You have Trump and Biden, both in the hands of the Jesuits. Okay, I'm going to be linking an older video of mine, America What Happened, which I think I did maybe a year or two years ago. In that video, I have not watched it. Um, I have not watched it, but um, might be covering a lot of the same verses also from that video. But um, you, my American countrymen, you, you, need, you need to wake up now. Okay? Now. And if you are of the church of the living God, not a Christian, but of the church of the living God, and you are an American, you are in America, what are you doing going to vote? If you are of the Church of the Living God, truly saved and born again, and have our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within you, what, what are you doing going to uh, going to be coming up here, going to vote for one of these two wicked men. The lesser of two evils? No, you're still choosing evil. Okay? But now, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, and turn into the authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 46. To Psalm 146, excuse me. Psalm 146. 
I had the opportunity today to speak with a beloved brother whom I do not get the, the privilege to speak with often. And um, he mentioned to me uh, Psalm 146 because the Lord had revealed something to him. And of course, I was out tracting when I was talking to this beloved brother. And of course, when I got home, I looked at it and I saw this in Psalm 146. And to be honest with you, brethren, sisters, I have been um, kind of hesitant to do this video. <laughs> but today's the day. Psalm 146. <clears throat> Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. And uh, if you are of the church of the living God, truly saved and born again, okay, that is what ought to be right here. Being thankful. In all things, give thanks. Being thankful that the Lord, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, saved you by his grace. And you are saved by grace through faith. Okay? It is by grace you are saved. And you and I, as the church of the living God, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. What do you think Biden and Trump are going to do? Just make things worse. His breath goeth forth he returneth to his earth in that very day his thoughts perish happy is he that hath the god of jacob for his help whose hope is in the lord his god the god of jacob the lord jesus christ god our father my god and if you are of the church of the living god my brother and sister He's your God as well. Okay? America. The little G God of America is Satan. Has been for a long time. For quite a long time. When was America ever great? When? When? America has just progressively gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. And these poor, deluded fools, and what is a fool? Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. These fools think that a man is going to uplift America, as if he had the Cyrus anointing. <laughs> as a brother told me about how these wicked charismatics said that uh, Trump had the Cyrus anointing and going to Isaiah 45 and also pointing out how Cyrus brought back um, uh, the allowed the children of Israel to go back and they rebuilt and became a great nation again. Right. Yeah totally out of context but they say that trump has the cyrus anointing yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah trump does have an anointing yeah but not from our lord jesus christ god our father yes trump is in office yes god allowed him to be put in office for the punishment of this nation. But let's continue. <clears throat> again, let's read verse 5 again. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, 
which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, the Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. Just like America is going to be turned upside down, inside out, and devastated here very, very soon. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise ye the Lord. And these Christians in America who go to church buildings, who read Bibles, not the scriptures. Their little G God is a God who doesn't judge, a God who changes repentance from going from unbelief to belief, who's okay with you being part of the world, who would have you to be as the world to win the world who speak unto you smooth things and prophesy deceits. Thank the God of the scriptures. Oh, yeah, that is the little G God of the Bibles that are out there. But of the scriptures? No. Absolutely not. Christianity here in America <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. You have to remember, brethren, sisters, my countrymen, they called us Christians. We Church of the Living God did not call ourselves Christians. That's what they called us. And remember, Catholics are Christians. Mormons are Christians. Methodists are Christians. Lutherans are Catholics. Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's the distinction? And you got to remember something too there, friends. What is the one thing that binds all these Christians together? What is the most fundamental doctrine, according to Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, what is the foundational doctrine, according to Catholicism, for being a Christian? Three gods that make one God. Three divine persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body that make one God. Hence, that's what binds all the Christians together. They all serve the same God. And that, that vomitous, wicked Phil Robinson, he did a uh, documentary, I think, called Unashamed or something like that, where he talks about the Catholics, but yet he painted the Catholics as, yeah, they're Christians, but they're, they're just kind of a little messed up. Because they... They believe in the Trinity, just like all these Christians do. Hey, are you a Christian? Or are you of the Church of the Living God? Which one are you? Turn now to Proverbs. Now, 
One of the things, like I said, one of the things that people who look in their Bibles to try to justify Trump and all the, you know, America is going to be great again, <laughs> they like to stay within the Old Testament, which is doctrinally written for the Jews. Yes, there are doctrines that cross dispensational lines for us today. Absolutely. And yes, instruction in righteousness uh, is found within the Old Testament. And yes, if you do not read the Old Testament, those of you of the Church of the Living God, you are crippling yourself severely. Okay, all things that were written for time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort through the scriptures might have hope. Romans 15 verse 4. Okay, so yes, yes, but you have to remember the majority of what is in the Old Testament has nothing to do doctrinally with us today. It is for the Jewish people. It is for the Jewish people. Proverbs chapter 28. Verses 2 on to verse 16. Okay? Go there, of course. You are, I shouldn't have to tell you that. Proverbs 28, verses 2 on to verse 16. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Like Trump! <laughs> yeah, yeah. A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Is it not truth that black lives matter and Antifa? want to defund the police? And what happens when Holy Joe, if Holy Joe becomes president, which I believe he's going to be selected, defund the police to bring in martial law? Yeah. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Evil men understand not judgment. There is an old, <coughs> excuse me. There is an old video of Trump where he was asked about repentance or asking for forgiveness. He and he mumbles and stumbles and says uh, basically, "I don't feel like I have to. I don't feel like I need to ask for forgiveness. I just try to do better." <laughs> but th those of you, my countrymen, that disgusting, vomitous pig, uh, Phil Robinson, or Robertson, whatever his name is, devil. Um, yeah, yeah, Trump's a Christian. Sure is. He, he isn't of the Church of the Living God. He's not saved. He's a devil. Okay? Let's continue. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous, riotous men shameth his father. Roll that around your head a little bit about the Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all this nonsense that's going on in our country, my fellow countrymen. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, 
Even his prayer shall be abomination. Who do you think these Christians pray to? Who do you think they pray to? I'll give you 50 guesses and all 49, uh, first 49 don't count. They're not, um, they're not praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father of the Scriptures. No. No. Let's continue. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, but the poor that hath understanding searcheth him out. Oh, isn't that true, huh? Those of us who are poor who can barely make it. We see these rich guys and rich women who have more than hearts can are their heart can desire. And think that they're being chastened because their truck is in the shop. Their $50,000 truck. <laughs> yeah. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Mm -hmm. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Ah. Ah. Tell me. With everything that's going on, with all that's, you know, with all the devastation, with all this stuff in America, who is confessing and forsaking things that they might get right with the Lord? A nation that, as I understand it, and I might have this, um, the number is right, but um, seven... 120 million abortions, either by physical or chemical. 720 million abortions done in America. Pro choice, huh? Seven hundred and twenty million abortions in America. That's more than the population. <laughs> and you, my countrymen, tell me, tell me, when was America great? Verse 14, happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. Happy is the man that feareth alway. Hold your place here. Go to Job 28, verse 28. Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The terror of the Lord. You know, the true Jesus Christ, God our Father of the Scriptures. Not the big giant teddy bear. <laughs> one of three and the one in the middle died for me. No, no, no. No. The true God. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think America fears the Lord? <clears throat> you, my brethren and sisters, 
of other nations. Does your nation fear the Lord? I, I, I rest my case. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. And hey, most Americans are poor. Unemployment is like, <laughs> I forget what the number is about how many people are on unemployment. And then you got billionaire Trump. And you also got uh, Joe Biden, who also is not hurting financially, who's probably prospering during all this mess, most likely. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. Verse 27. Oh, no, excuse me. Verse 28. Jump to verse 28. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves. But when they perish, the righteous increase. And right now, righteous men are the ones who are perishing. Being silent. Not saying anything. Those are the church of the living God. If you keep silence, are you not committing sin? What are you afraid of? Hmm? Proverbs now, chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 12. Proverbs chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 12. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Okay, those of you who like to go in your Bibles to try to justify America and Trump, okay? Has not America been reproved? Has not America hardened its neck? Huh? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And those are you. <laughs> if you have the church of the living God and you're deluded in believing that Trump is this God. But first of all, I, I have a very difficult time believing that um, anyone of the Church of the Living God here in America um, believes that Trump is also of the Church of the Living God. <laughs> I, I really have a difficult time um, coming to terms with that. Um, if you are the Church of the Living God, and you are a so-called Trump supporter. You um, um, you need to examine yourself. You need to truly examine yourself and repent. You really do. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. What did we read in Job twenty-eight twenty-eight? But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Al Smith Dinner, who is Catholic, okay? Trump is Jesuit trained, going to um, do away with anti-Catholic bias. Biden, also a Catholic. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Hold your place here and go to Revelation chapter 17. Oh, excuse me. Revelation, come on. Excuse me. Revelation chapter 17. Okay? 
there are also people out there who like to say that and people and people actually people actually believe this that America's <laughs> is Babylon <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I, I'm so happy that Steven Anderson is blah, 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 bye. I am so happy, to be honest with you. But, okay. Revelation chapter 17. Okay. We will read verses 1 on to verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven horn heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, people say, well, Rome's colors are white and gold. When you look at the procession, the bishops and cardinals, it's purple and scarlet. Okay? And uh, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The popes, the jewelry, the glamour, the glitz of Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Um, if you are of my countrymen and you seriously believe that Mystery Babylon is America, you are, you are horrifically deceived and most likely deceiving yourself. Verse 5, And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now the waters uh, signifies people. You, If you were to continue um, reading here, verse 15. And he said unto me, verse 15, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay? And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the earth, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Because when the Antichrist is revealed after the Church of the Living God is resurrected, redeemed, caught up, okay? The Antichrist will be revealed, who will be of Jewish origin, and he's going to look exactly like the Roman Catholic Jesus. And the Pope is going to take off his dagon, his dagon fish helmet, and cast it at the feet of the Antichrist. Yeah, that's what I believe. But it's Rome, dear friend. It's Rome. It's not America. It's Rome. And back in Proverbs 29, verse 3, Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. Okay? And let's refresh our memories. Okay? Let's refresh our memories about this. Okay, Job 28, verse 28. Come on, fingers, work with me. Job 28, verse 28. And unto man, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots 
spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. How, my, how many gifts do you think Donald Trump has received from the Vatican? How many gifts do you think Joe Biden will receive from the Vatican or, or, or already has received? A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. Isn't that what all these politicians do? Flattery? In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare. But the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor. But the wicked regardeth not to know it. You think Biden, Trump, you think these people considereth the cause of the poor? <laughs> Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Those of us who fear the Lord, who still pray for this nation, spare us, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, for today, that those who are going to be saved today may be saved, that they may be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because, um, you know, brethren, brethren, sisters, yes, I wanted the uh, resurrection to happen um, about a minute ago. But... Think in your mind, okay, think in your mind, who possibly got legitimately saved by grace through faith today and have come to the Lord broken and contrite, believed on the Lord Jesus Christ for what he did for us on the cross and humbled themselves and called upon the name of the Lord and got saved today. What would have happened if we had been already caught up? Like I said, I wanted the uh, resurrection to happen a second ago. Yesterday. But that's something to keep in mind. Verse 8. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Look at that verse. If a wise man contend with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. A foolish man. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14 and Psalm 53. Okay? The fool hath said in, there, in his heart, there is no God. But yet they're calling on Jesus, but not Jesus, the Jesus of the scriptures. Whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Oh boy. The bloodthirsty hate the upright. Our uprightness is of Jesus Christ, God our Father, not of ourselves. Okay? And those who are his enemies, the bloodthirsty, hate us. Absolutely hate us. And the majority of them would kill us if they had the opportunity. A fool uttereth all his mind. But a wise man keepeth in till afterwards. And look at this. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. And hello. Hello, America. 
Hello, America. Look at verse 27 in Proverbs chapter 29. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. It's one thing that you go out of your way to gain attack. It's another thing when you just do what the scriptures say and preach the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, of the authorized version of the scriptures, and that brings attack. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. An unjust man is abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is, an, is abomination to the wicked. Now, go to Jeremiah. Go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 25 on to verse 31. O oh, America, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. For among my people are found wicked men, they lay wait, as he that set a snares, they set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great, and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet, the, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God loves you. You know, just believe. Just believe. Oh, Oh, you're, you're a sodomite, practicing sodomite? I did that. That's debatable. But God loves you anyway. Come on in. Come on into our church and have a donut. And the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. Now, you got to remember something, okay? Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is written unto and for the Jews, okay? But see, those, I, I, that, that disgusting, vomitous Phil Robinson, or Robertson, whatever his name is, the duck commander guy, they, going through the Old Testament and uh, just oh, quoting these things out of the New Testament, out of his Bible, it's disgusting. But these are things that those of uh, our countrymen who call themselves Christians, who search in their Bibles to justify Trump and America, these are things that they don't like to look at. Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 7 on to verse 10. 
doctrinally and dispensationally, this is for the Jews. Okay? There is instruction in righteousness, yes. But it is pertaining on to the Jews. America has not, has not, number one, replaced Israel and Jerusalem. Number two, the Church of the Living God has not replaced Israel. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 7 on to verse 10. At what instant I shall speak concerning the nation, and concerning the kingdom to pluck up, and to pull down, and to destroy it? If, circle if, that nation against whom I have pronounced, turn from their evil. I will repent of the evil that I have thought, that I thought, to do unto them, turn from their evil. You, my American countrymen, do you really think that as a nation here in America, that America as a nation is going to turn from its evil? Abortion, sorcery, witchcraft, idolatry, verse 9, and at what instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if they do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would do would benefit them. And hence, Jeremiah now, chapter 30. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 30. Verses 12 on to verse 15. My American countrymen, you have to wake up and understand Trump or Biden is not going to do anything but make it worse. America is going to fall very, very soon. Okay? And we as the Church of the Living God, yes, pray that the Lord hold off his, uh, his judgment, that those who may, who are going to get saved, be saved. But ultimately, 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 Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 12 on to verse 15. For thus saith the Lord, Thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines, even though we got a whole bunch of uh, uh, sorcery drugs from the sorcerers, the, Jesuit, the Jesuits, you know, the pharmacaea. All thy lovers have forgotten thee, they seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. God's judgment is upon this country. And is Trump or Biden talking about a national repentance? Oh, there's coming a revival, a latter rain. Uh, the latter rain is for us here, for today, in this dispensation. You're nuts. No. No. With the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. 
Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitudes for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. It is only by God's sheer mercy and long suffering, not patience, there's a difference. It is only by our Lord's long suffering. And because of the Church of the Living God that is in this nation still. That total destruction and devastation hasn't come to a head fully yet. And hopefully, hopefully we, the Church of the Living God, will be called out, you know, caught up, redeemed, resurrected in the springtime next year. That's what I'm hoping. We will see. Now, now, go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. Now, you have to remember something here. Again, this is written unto the Jews. This is about the Jews. Doctrinally, this is for the Jews. Instruction in righteousness, yes. Yes. But, okay, with that said, Isaiah 1, verses 4 on to verse 7. And, of course, go ahead and read verses 1 on to verse 3 to show you who, who, who's he, who he's addressing. But, okay, want to go to the Old Testament to, to uh, justify Trump and, and America? Okay? Yeah? A sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head. There is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Now remember, dispensationally, doctrinally, this is for the Jews. Okay? Remember that. Remember that, but your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Hmm. Who are those strangers? Who are those strangers? Now, the Secreta Monita. The Secreta Monita. Okay, like I said, I addressed this a year or two years ago in an old video, America, what happened. But now, today, <laughs> okay, I'm going to link that in this video so you can see that video as well. Okay, now this is the facsimile copy of the Secreta Monita, which, uh, which is uh, a copy of this is in the British Museum. Okay. But I want to read this. Uh, read this to you now, okay? We are. I'm going to read chapter two in the Secreta Monita, okay? I also have this actual um, thing, this uh, version of the Secreta Monita. Yes, there are many versions of it, okay? I have this particular one. Uh, the PDF is on my channel, so you can download it and see for yourself. I recommend that you download this the uh the off of the pdf on my channel i really do okay i really do the secreto monita chapter two i'm going to read this to you okay then we're going to get back to more scriptures who are these strangers chapter two in the secreto monita in what manner the society must deport that they may work themselves into 
and after that preserve a familiarity with princes, noblemen, and persons of great distinction. Number one. Princes and persons of distinction everywhere must by all means be so managed that we may have their ear, and that will easily secure their hearts, by which way of proceeding all persons will become our creatures, and no one will dare to give the society the least disquiet or opposition. Did not Trump pay homage to a statue of, uh, what was it, Pope John Paul II? Hmm? Two, that ecclesiastical persons gain a great footing in the favor of princes and noblemen by winking at their vices and putting a favorable construction on whatever they do amiss, experience convinces and this experience convinces and this we may observe in their contracting of marriages with their near relations and kindred or the like it must be our business to encourage such to encourage such <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, whose inclination lies this way by leading them up in hopes that through our assistance they may easily, easily obtain a dispensation from the Pope. <laughs> yeah, the Pope, the Catholic God on earth. And no doubt he will readily grant it if proper reasons be urged. Parallel cases produced, and opinions quoted, which, co which countenance such actions, when the common good of mankind and the greater advancement of God's glory, which are the only end and design of the society, are pretended to be the sole motives of them. <laughs> are pretended to be the sole motives of them. Come right out and say it, why don't you? Yeah, why do you think Catholics and coadjutors dispute this? Well, look at this in verse 2. Yeah, you can't see this. But if you download it, uh, yeah, you can, okay? Uh, that ecclesiastical persons, Christians, gain a great footing in the favor of princes and noblemen by winking at their vices and putting a favorable construction on whatever they do amiss. Experience convinces. Winking at their vices. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to have a changed life. God loves you. Come to the church building. Come. <laughs> and putting a favorable construction on whatever they do amiss? Oh, 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 you, you're in a sodomite relationship? But you're a Christian? Oh, that, we don't particularly care for that, but come on in. Come on in. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Three, the same must be observed when the prince happens to engage in any enterprise which is not equally approved by all his nobility. For in such cases, he must be egged on and excited. <clears throat> whilst they, on the other hand, whilst they, on the other hand, must be dissuaded from opposing him and advised to uh, acquiesce in all his proposals. But this must be done only in generals, of always avoiding particulars. In generals, 
always avoiding particulars. Lest upon the ill success of the affair, the miscarriage be thrown upon the society, hot nor cold, neither condemning or affirming, sophistry, and should ever the action be called in question, care must be taken to have instructions always ready, plainly forbidding it. And these also must be backed with the authority of some senior members, who being wholly ignorant of the matter, must attest upon oath that such groundless insinuations are a malicious and base imputation on the society. Ignorance is bliss. Not everyone within the Jesuits know the, um, the plans and schemes of the upper echelon <laughs> of the Jesuits. That way, when things go afoul, they could say they honestly don't know, and because they don't honestly know. You see? We have a term for it in American jargon, in political jargon, plausible deniability. Four, it will also very much further us in gaining the favor of princes if our members artfully war worm themselves by the interest of others into honorable embassies to foreign courts in their behalf, but especially to the Pope and great monarchs. For by such opportunities, they will be in, in a capacity both to recommend themselves and their society. Fauci, the guy who's the head also of the Catholic disease creators, Jesuit, Jesuit, Jesuit. To this end, therefore, let none but those zealous for our interest, coadjutors, and persons well versed in the schemes and institution of the society be ever pitched upon for such purposes. Five, above all, due care must be taken to curry favor with the minions and domestics of princes and noblemen, whom by small presence and many offices of piety we may so far bias we may so far bias as by means of them to get a faithful intelligence of the bent of their masters' humors and inclinations. Thus will the society be the better qualified to chime in with all their tempers. Look at what happened recently about um, people who said they were of us, but they were not of us, and they went out from us, proving that they were never of us. I just paraphrased that, butchered that, but look at that. They came in to get information. And I have a message for a specific individual whose name I'm not going to name. Not of my nation. Up north, eh? The Lord rebuke you if your loose tongue caused damage to the brethren. For what was spoken in your presence in trust. Woe be to you. Woe be to you. To betray people just like that who loved you who trusted you. And then you go to a con man
May the Lord rebuke you. May the Lord rebuke you. And if you even have any inkling of or a semblance within you of what is decent, I pray you repent. Six. How much the society has benefited from their engagements in marriage treaties, the houses of, Aust of Austria and Bourbon, Poland, and other kingdoms are experimental, are experimental evidences. Wherefore, let such matches be with prudence, picked out, whose parents are our friends, and firmly attached to our interests. <laughs> Seven. Princes and ladies of quality are easily to be gained by the influence of the women of their bedchamber. For which reason, we must by all means pay a particular address to these, for thereby there will be no secrets in the family, but what we shall have fully disclosed to us. No secrets in the family. In direct, uh, eight, in directing the consciences of great men, it must be observed that our confessors are to follow the opinion of those who allow the greater latitude. In opposition to that of other religious orders, that their pentients being allured with the prospect of such freedom may readily relinquish them and wholly depend on our, our direction and counsel. Nine. Princes, prelates, and all others who are capable of being signally serviceable to the order must be favored so far as to be made partakers of all the merits of the society after a proper information of the high importance of so great a privilege. Let these notions be cautiously and with cunning, in, and with cunning instilled into the people, that this society is entrusted with a far greater power of absolving, even in the nicest cases, of dispensing with fasts, with pain and demanding of debts, with impediments of matrimony and other common matters, than any other religious order, which insinuations will be of such consequence that many of necessity must have recourse to us and thereby lay themselves under the strictest obligations. It will be very proper to give invitation. Oh, excuse me. Eleven. It will be very proper to give invitations to such to attend our sermons and fellowships, to hear our orations and declamations, as also to accompaniment them with verses and thesis, to address them in a, in a genteel and complacent manner, and at proper opportunities to give them handsome entertainments. Welcome to the American Church Buildings. Twelve, let proper methods be used to get knowledge of the animosities that arise among great men. This is right here. This is the Hegelian principle right here. Okay. Let proper methods be used to get knowledge of the animosities that arise among great men, that we may have a finger in reconciling their differences. For by this means we shall gradually become acquainted with their friends and secret affairs, and of necessity engage one of the parties in our interests. 13. But should discovery happen to be made that any person serves either king or prince who is not well affected toward our society, no stone must be left unturned by our 
members or which is more proper, some other, to induce him by promises, favors, and preferments, which must be procured for him under his king or prince, to entertain a friendship for, for and familiarity with us. 14. Let all be very, very cautious of recommending or preferring such as have been any way dismissed from the society, but especially those who of their own accord have departed from it. For let them disguise it ever so cunningly. Nevertheless, they always retain an implacable hatred against our order. And 15. Finally, let all with such artfulness gain the ascendant over princes, noblemen, and the magistrates of every place, that they may be ready at our beck, even to sacrifice their nearest relations and most intimate friends when we say it is for our interest and advantage. The love of Mother Church comes first. Yeah. 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 And looking in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 7 again. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate and overthrown by strangers. Of course, had to read. Of course, had to share that with you. From the Secreta Monita. The Jesuits are all over this thing. Satan. Okay. Now. Now. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 20. Beg your pardon. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 25 and 26. Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 25 and verse 26. Again, this is for the Jews, but for our, in our instruction in righteousness and, hello America, wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, and that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, that I might make them desolate, to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Has not America been polluted in its own gifts? What happened when America was a prosperous nation? Way back when, in the 19th century or in the 1900s, one could make arguments when the scriptures at least had a place somewhere. But what would happen? Think about it. What would happen? Let's just say hypothetically that Biden or Trump <laughs> Um, were to make America a prosperous nation once again with all the sin and iniquity it would get worse it would get worse Micah Micah chapter 7 Micah chapter 7 Verses 1 on to verse 7. Micah chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 7. Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as the great gleanings of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man, his brother, with a net. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, and the judge asketh for a reward. 
and the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. The best of them is a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. Hello! The day of thy watchman and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. Again, dispensationally, doctrinally, for the Jewish people, written on to the Jewish people, our instruction in righteousness. <clears throat> and here, here's the painful thing, which is echoed by our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. In the book 1984, written by George Orwell, who I, I am convinced there is a definite Masonic or Jesuit tie there somewhere. Um, he talks about in the book 1984 about how children are and are being brought up to betray their parents and stuff like that and that uh, that the one um, ex-wife of the main character was more loyal to the um, company or to the order and here with the and the coming vaccine Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. And those of you of the church of the living God, Who in your own house there are those against the Lord <clears throat> therefore I will look unto the Lord I will wait for the God of my salvation my God will hear me. My God will hear me. You have to remember in Second Timothy, Chapter Three, okay? In Second Timothy, Chapter Three, okay? Verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay. This is. Now this is for us today. This dispensation. The time of the Gentiles. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their, of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient. Parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Are you not entertained? having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, of, you know, changed life, abstain from all appearance of evil. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. From such, turn away. And a video that I did a um, expository um, study on, okay, Second Peter chapter two. 
Okay, I, I did an expository uh, study video on Second Peter chapter two. Okay, but for sake of this video, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. People be like, okay, these Christians that go to these church buildings, they're okay with this, they're okay with that. What difference is in them that is with the regular people of the world? Only that they sing to rock music. Oh, and they call on Jesus, but yet they are of the world, look like the world, act like the world, speak like the world. Yeah, and there are some of you out there who think there's a revival coming. You're mad. You're mad. You're insane. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, okay, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. A type of the catching away, the type of the resurrection. Okay? Noah and his family went into the ark. The rain came down and lifted up the ark. Okay? God's judgment for only 40 days and 40 nights. A type of the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. A type. Okay? And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man, dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day, with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Also, a type of the catching away. Okay? Lot was taken by the hand and brought out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? Also a type. But also, very holy place there, Isaiah 57, okay, Isaiah 57, and by the way, uh, a lot of these guys, uh, especially that that fool, uh, Phil Robertson, or Robertson, whatever his name is, um, uh, I don't really know, but I would not be surprised if he were to, uh, if, to find out that he believes that he's going to be going through the Great Tribulation. <laughs> Isaiah 57, verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. And verse 2. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Had to throw that in there. Okay, back to Second Peter chapter two, verse nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lusts in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Okay, despise government. The government being referenced there, if you were to read First Peter, 
and in Romans, okay, what is that, Romans chapter 13, right? But if you were to keep reading, okay, it's talking about a government that has at the least respect for the laws of God. You tell me something. Do you think America does? Yeah. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities, whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts, unregenerate, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of those things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, <laughs> Biden, Trump, okay, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Allure through the flush, lusts of the flesh and much wantonness. Let's make America great again. So you can have lots of money. So you can buy your sports cars. And your, what, 80 some odd inch flat screen televisions? Okay? Your houses that you can't afford? Live like kings who are paupers? <laughs> While they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. Servants of Rome! Controlled by the Jesuits. For of whom a man is overcome, the same as he brought in bondage. Uh, you got Trump, Biden, they're in bondage to Rome. America. Is Jesuit America. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. What does this mean? For if for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And Second Peter chapter 3 verses 3 under verse 7. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? There is, we're not going to be caught up as they say, as they erroneously say, there's no pre-tribulation rapture. We're going to be going through what they erroneously call uh, the great tribulation. For since the fathers fell asleep, 
All things continue as they were from the beginning of the crea creation. For this they are willingly ignorant. Not knowing better on purpose. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament, to a very popular um, chapter that a lot of these people like to go to and put America into it. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Verses 12 on to verse 22. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and I have chosen this place to, to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, If my people, now again, remember, doctrinally, dispensationally, this is specifically for the Jewish people, okay? Instruction and righteousness, yes, okay? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. You're out of your cotton-picking mind if you think Trump or Biden is going to lead this nation on to such. You're out of your mind. You are insane. You are crazy. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. Or, excuse me, as I should say, right? There shall not fail thee a rule there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in America. <laughs> yeah, right. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, which Solomon did. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to every one that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus? Onto this land and onto this house, and it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, 
and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. And in verse 20, it says, Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. America is still militarily a strong nation. Yes. And yes. We Americans are well armed. Yes, and what better way to destroy America by civil war, by turning the American people against themselves who are heavily armed? Civil war is coming, my American countrymen. You have to face that. You have to accept that. And where it says here, a proverb and a byword among all nations, our instruction in righteousness. I had a brother said, uh, who I was talking to from Australia, and the topic of America came up, and I was saying to him, brother, you know, it's okay. You can state the obvious and bless his heart and soul. He's like, no, but that's, that's rude. But, see, that's the point. Uh, we are a proverb and a byword among all nations. Yes, we have liberty. Yes, we have freedom. Yes, I am able to sit here and do the work of the Lord and preach to you uh, of what the Lord gives me from the scriptures. Yes, I have freedom to walk outside. Yes, yes. But this is all coming to an end. And I also am aware that if Biden gets into office or is selected, he's going to make the face mask thing a federal law. You, you look that up on your own, you don't believe me. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I truly believe that the Jesuits are going to select and put in Biden. Either way. Either way. But look at verse 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Is that happening in the midst of all this stuff? Is America turning to God? Which one? Jesus Christ, God, our Father of the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures? Or the Jesus given to them of the Jesuits, which is the Antichrist? Okay, is there in America, Isaiah 55, okay, Isaiah 55, is there in America a ruler, a senator, a re representative, a demokami, or a republican, okay, is there anyone here in America Doing this, which is in Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. Are, are selected officials doing this? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon How about in Jeremiah chapter 16? Okay? Jeremiah 16, verses 16 on to verse 17. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, 
and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt for them from every mountain, and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways, they are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. Hmm? Who of the selected officials of the church buildings are doing stuff like this? Hey, hey, guess what? Oh, and by the way, if any of you out there who might happen to see this, Mention John MacArthur. I don't. I don't want to vomit. Okay, John MacArthur is a is a lost devil, and if you are following John MacArthur at all, oh boy. And how about this one? Go to Ezra. Go to Ezra. Ezra chapter nine. Ezra chapter 9. Ezra chapter 9, verses 4 under verse 7. Ezra chapter 9, verses 4 under verse 7. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel, because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonied until the evening sacrifice. Where's the national repentance? It's not coming. Who amongst our selected uh, leaders are doing this? And at the evening sacrifice, I arose up from my heaviness. And having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord, my God, and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in great trespass unto this day, and for our iniquities have we, our kings and our pre priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings, kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, and to spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. Is anyone praying like this? Oh, there are those of the Church of the Living God, yes. And, you know, it is because of the Church of the Living God that total devastation has yet to come upon America. Because of his long suffering. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's finish the chapter. And now for a little space, grace hath been shewed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving to set up the house of our God, and to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. See, there are those out there, especially these wicked charismatic nuts of the latter rain movement who's like, oh, the latter rain is coming. There's coming a revival. You're crazy. Uh, did were you did you read Second Timothy three uh, one through five, Second Peter chapter two? Okay. Do you do you get it? There's not coming a revival. This was written on to who? The Jews in a different dispensation. Yes. Okay. But 
Look at what he says in verse 10. And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servants the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which we which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds, and for our great trespass, seeing that thou or that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserved, and hast given us such deliverance as this, should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldest not thou be angry with us till thou hadst consumed us, so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped, as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. Look, I am glad and grateful that I am I live in America, yes. But I want to go and be with the Lord. And I want I wanted to be caught up uh, five seconds ago, yesterday, and the day before, and the day before. Who 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 doesn't want to go and be with the Lord? If you are of the church of the living God, who doesn't want to go and be with the Lord? But there again, brethren, remember this. Try to keep in your mind those who truly and genuinely may have gotten saved and born again today that didn't yesterday. Because remember, once, once the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, is resurrected, redeemed, caught up, this dispensation ends. And brethren, look around, look around outside your door. Guess what? These are the people that are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. There they are. There they are. This is the generation. These are the people that are going to be going through it. Church of the living God. And those of you, my countrymen, your vote means nothing. Don't waste your time. Instead, get the scriptures. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And get right. Because America is coming to an end. That's going to be it for this video. I truly hope that you of my countrymen take heed to these things. And knowing what's coming, how diligent ought you to be 
to get out there and do whatever it is in whatever capacity the Lord has put you in to do the works of the Lord. Like today I went out tracting. I always make time for tracting. Do whatever it is, whatever capacity you are in, serve the Lord, because the doors are closing. And very soon here in America, the selections will happen. And I'll bet you 10 bucks. We're going to see some immediate repercussions. So. I love you. Thank you for watching if you do. And we will see you, Lord willing, in the next video. Who is on the Lord's side?